Hello and welcome to Wagner's Tech Talk. Today we're going to take a look at the Canikit Raspberry Pi 4 Extreme Kit. We'll unbox it, we'll assemble it. I'll even show you how to install Pi OS using noobs, and we'll run some cooling tests. Let's get started. Let's talk about what's included in the kit. You get a Raspberry Pi 4 Model B with 8GB of RAM, 128GB Samsung EVO Plus microSD with noobs pre-installed, a premium aluminum case with passive heatsink cooling. By passive heatsink, that means there's nothing spinning, nothing turning, i.e. no fans. It's completely quiet. It also includes two micro HDMI to HDMI cables at 6 foot each, a USB-C Pi switch to allow you to easily turn on or off your Raspberry Pi, a USB-C power supply at 3.5 amps, a USB card reader, and a quick start guide and GPIO reference. Let's go ahead and unbox the Canikit Raspberry Pi 4 Extreme Kit, the aluminum edition. This particular unit was sent to me for review by Canikit, and I'm excited to check it out. Well, let's go ahead and open it and see what's inside. And what is this? A README first. Go ahead and pause this if you're interested. A thank you note with their support email address. And a couple of cables. These are HDMI to micro HDMI cables. And you have two of them. Very cool. And let's see, we've got inside this package a 128 gigabyte Samsung Evo Plus micro SD. I like that. It also includes this very useful USB-C switch with a USB female connector on the other end to plug into the power. And you could just easily turn it on and off. There's also a USB reader, so that's very handy to have. And let's see, we'll go ahead and take a look at the Raspberry Pi 4, 8 gigs of RAM. Here we have the power input, and you have two HDMI ports, your AV jack. And on the side here, you have two USB 2.0 ports, two USB 3.0 ports, and gigabit Ethernet. On the side here, you have GPIO header pins, your display port, and your camera port. And if we flip it over on the other side, this is where your micro SD card goes. Just in case you weren't familiar with the Raspberry Pi 4 Model B itself. All right, so now we'll move on to what's in this box, and it's the USB-C power supply. You have a USB-C connector on one end and a 5.1 volt, 3.5 amp power supply. And moving on to an important cast member on the show, the Canikit branded case. Now this case uses passive cooling in order to cool the Raspberry Pi 4, which basically there's no moving components. Active cooling is if you have a fan, this does not. The case itself works as a large heat sink, which dissipates the heat from the Raspberry Pi 4, and essentially it's a rebranded version of the popular flirt case. It also has screws and a thermal pad, as well as a bottom cover, which we'll assemble here shortly. There are also rubber feet to keep it from sliding around on your desk. And also in the package, you have this Kennekit Quick Start Guide, which has a lot of useful information. And now, let's put it all together. The assembly of this case is very easy, so grab your Raspberry Pi 4, your accessory pack with your screws and your thermal pad. Peel off the backing to the thermal pad and apply it to the metal case here in the middle. And give it a nice little push. And then after that, go ahead and peel the top backing off. Just like that. Almost. There we go. <laughs> Tilt the Pi 4 at a slight angle and align the connectors and it just sets right in. Just like that. Make sure you have no micro SD card in the slot. And go ahead and set the bottom cover and make sure that the micro SD opening is on the right hand side as shown here. 
and go ahead and put in your four screws. Should go in very smoothly. I'm going to go ahead and fast forward this process for you. And as you can see, it's very easy to do. It shouldn't take you any more than about five minutes to complete the assembly of the case, which is etched with the Canakit logo. And there's all your ports and connectors. Now we'll go ahead and plug in the USB-C switch for the power and the power adapter itself, which is, of course, not plugged into an outlet at this point. And now we'll drop in the micro SD card into the slot here. And next we'll connect up the HDMI connector to it. So take your micro HDMI in and plug it into the port nearest the power outlet, like so. You will need a USB keyboard and mouse, so go ahead and plug one into the USB 2.0 ports. And now we can power it on and let's set it up. Now that we have everything all in place, let's go ahead and set up PyOS. When it first boots, it's going to load up noobs, and what you want to do is select your language. Now select your Wi-Fi name or SSID. Mine happens to be Lucas, so I'm going to select that and enter my passphrase to my Wi-Fi network. And from there, you'll see a list of various operating systems that you can select from. But we're going to pick Raspberry Pi OS 32-bit. Go ahead and click Yes. It will then download and install Pi OS, which will take about 25 minutes. Once done, simply click the OK button to go ahead and restart your Raspberry Pi 4. From here, we'll go through the install wizard. You'll see our IP address up here above the next button. We'll go ahead and click next. And we'll go ahead and check the use English language checkbox and hit next. Next, it'll ask us to change the password to the Raspberry Pi. So I'll do that and hit next. And now it's asking about a black border around the edge of the screen. And yes, we have one. So we'll check that and click next. And it'll scan for our Wi-Fi networks. We'll click Lucas, click Next. Of course, you'll pick your own, enter your Wi-Fi passphrase, and hit Next. Next, it'll ask if you want to check for updates. Go ahead and hit Next here. It's a good idea to go ahead and update to the latest software. It'll take a little while yet again, but once it's done, just simply click the OK button and restart. Just a quick tip, if you have any trouble connecting to your Wi-Fi network, go into Preferences, and then go down to Raspberry Pi Configuration, and go to the Localization tab, and make sure your Wi-Fi country is set properly. If it's not, you may have difficulty connecting. Now is a great time for a cooling test. So we're going to start out with a Raspberry Pi 4, the same one we installed into the case, but with no heat sinks, obviously no cooling. And let's see what the temperatures come out to be. First off, I'm going to issue a command that's going to go out to the internet and see if there's an update for stress. I've already installed it here, so of course there's going to be no update, but that's the command to run. I will also have it in the show notes below. If the CPU were to reach 80 degrees Celsius, it would be throttled, and at 85 degrees, the GPU would be throttled as well. Starting our test here, we start out at 40.9 degrees Celsius. I'm going to go ahead and load up Task Manager here so we can see what the CPU utilization looks like. And at this point, it's at 100%. You can see four instances of the stress command being run. There are more stringent tests that you can run, but this one seems to be a good one for this particular test. The maximum temperature reached was 73 degrees Celsius or 163.4 degrees Fahrenheit with no heat sinks or no fan. Now we'll repeat the same test with the extreme case. Go ahead and turn it on and go to a terminal window. I'll execute the same command, which again you can find in the show notes below. All right, so here we go. We're off to the races. I'm increasing the speed here 80 times, bringing up the task manager, and the results are 56 degrees Celsius, or 132.8 degrees Fahrenheit. So obviously, 
the extreme case performed quite well. Although it was slightly warm to the touch, it was not hot, it wouldn't burn you, it was uh, actually a nice little hand warmer. <laughs> it's cold in the office. And I thought I'd perform two more tests. In this test, we're going to take the fan and blow air out of the case and blow air into the case with no heat sinks and see what those results are. And now let's take a look at what happened. The results are first with no case and active cool with no heat sinks in the extreme case. The max temperature with no case was 73 degrees Celsius. Active cooling with no heat sinks with the fan up and down 57.9 and 64.2 and the extreme case fared quite well at 56 degrees Celsius. The Canon Kit Raspberry Pi 4 Extreme Kit Aluminum Edition with 8 gigs of RAM performed quite well in my tests here as you have just seen. I think it's a great value if you're looking for a kit that includes pretty much everything you need minus a keyboard and mouse and a monitor. Canon Kit products have always been high quality and this kit is absolutely no exception. You may also be interested to know that Kinnikit also has an exclusive white version of the case. I believe this case is only available on the Kinnikit website. I'll also place links down below for this version of the Extreme case. If you found this video helpful, please click the like button. If you'd like to see more from Wagner's Tech Talk, please click the subscribe. And with that, I will talk to you very soon.